हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज शिवभत्रा सिंह फ्रॉम हाजी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल एजुकेशन एंड रिसर्च एंड डिपेंडिंग ऑन माई प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑन द बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर एक्टिविटी रिलेशनशिप ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ड्रग डिजाइन टूडे ऑन द बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर एक्टिविटी रिलेशनशिप ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ड्रग डिजाइन टूडे we are going to discuss about sar of sympathomimetic agonist or phenyl ethylenamine agonist they are also known as adrenergic agonist if we focus on the general structure of phenyl ethylenamine it contains a phenyl ring joined to ethylene bridge to the terminal amino group hence the name is phenyl ethylenolamine phenyl ethylenolamine to better understand the sar let's divide the structure in three part part 1 contains the phenyl ring part 2 have ethylene linkage having alpha and beta carbon in the structure and part 3 have amino terminal in the general structure i have drawn i have given three points r1 r2 and r3 we can modify these points to obtain various drugs of this category for example i have drawn for example i have drawn structures of norepinephrine phenylephrine epinephrine terbutaline these are the various drugs from this same category norepinephrine have hydrogens at r1 and r2 position and r3 in the phenyl ring having third and fourth position dihydroxy group and this drug is both alpha and beta adrenoreceptor active the next drug is phenylephrine having methyl group at r1 position hydrogen at hydrogen at r2 position and in phenyl ring at third position there is one hydroxy group and the drug is alpha active the third drug is epinephrine having methyl group at r1 position hydrogen at r2 and in phenyl ring c group at third and fourth position and this drug is more beta active than the alpha the next drug is terbutaline having tertiary butyl group at r1 position hydrogen at r2 position and in phenyl substitution if the position have a dihydroxy group and this drug is beta active if we carefully watch all the structures of the drug then we can generate general requirements of optimal agonistic activity optimal agonistic activity what are they the first primary or secondary amino group each and every drug have terminal primary or secondary amino group in the structure so primary and secondary amino groups are important amino groups separated by two carbon from substituted phenyl ring the next hydroxyl group at beta position of the side chain and the beta carbon must be in r absolute configuration one by one we can discuss all the parts of the phenyl ethylenamine structure the part first is variation at r1 that is substitution on the amino nitrogen here i have ethylenamine structure which we are going to detail about this amino group is important for adrenergic agonistic activity because if we check all the structure of the drugs comes in this category like epinephrine phenylephrine phenylephrine terbutaline etc we observed that each drug have terminal primary or secondary amino group next point the receptor selectivity is dependent on the size of the alkyl group 
As the size of the alkyl group increases, activity at alpha receptor decreases and the activity of beta receptor increases. Example, epinephrine and isoprenaline. If we observe the structure of epinephrine and epinephrine contain methyl nitrogen group and isoprenaline contain isopropyl nitrogen group which indicates the increase in size of alkyl group of isoprenaline and the non selective nature the non selective nature of epinephrine that is it is both alpha and beta agonistic activity shift towards beta selectivity of isoprenaline next point if we further in the bulk of nitrogen then activity towards beta 2 receptor increases example terbutaline and solbutamol terbutamol uh, terbutaline and solbutamol both contains n tertiary butyl group tertiary butyl group which i have drawn in the table and this increases beta 2 selectivity next point it is uh, this beta 2 selectivity is because beta receptor has a large lipophilic tertiary butyl group gives selective activity at beta 2 receptor the next point larger substitution on amino nitrogen decreases metabolism by mao what is mao uh, mao is monoamine oxidase it oxidizes monoamine in the structure if we compare the structure of norepinephrine to other drugs like isoprenaline terbutaline solbutamol they should contain bulkier groups at the nitrogen all these drugs contain bulkier group at nitrogen nitrogen other than monoamine so they are not metabolized by monoamine oxidase and produce larger duration of action for these drugs coming to next variation at r2 far to the basic nitrogen here i have drawn the middle part of the phenylethylamine structure coming to the sar amino group should be separated from the aromatic ring by two carbon atoms two carbon atoms for optimal biological activity example if we draw the structures try like norepinephrine phenylephrine terbutaline drawn in the table we observe that in all structure amino terminal is separated by two carbon atoms separated by two carbon atoms from the phenyl ring so a distance of two carbon atoms is important for optimal biological activity next a small alkyl group like methyl or ethyl present at alpha carbon by mao example is amphetamine amphetamine contains one more methyl group at alpha carbon that is at position r2 in the general structure of phenylethylamine which protects the amino nitrogen from mao metabolism next point substitution at beta carbon by hydroxyl group also introduce asymmetric center into these nucleus producing pair of diastereomers and 1r2s stereoisomer shows maximum shows maximum activity this beta carbon hydroxyl group has a maximum direct activity in r configuration because it results in three points of attachment to the adrenergic receptor the phenyl ethylenamine drug have three point attachment with the adreno receptor coming to the third variation that is variation at r3 substitution on the aromatic ring 
Here I have drawn here I have drawn only the structure of phenyl ring of the phenyl ethanolamine. Three four dihydroxyl substitution is known as catechol ring, and it is required for both alpha and beta receptor activity. Example: epinephrine. But the disadvantage of 3,4 dihydroxyl substitution is that it is metabolized by COMT. COMT is catechol O methyl transferase. Hence, it gives poor oral activity. Activity. 3,5 dihydroxyl substitution is also known as resource in all ring, and it increases beta 2 selectivity. Has good oral activity, as it it could register the metabolism by COMT and the duration of action. Example is terbutaline. Terbutaline contains a resource in all ring rather than the catechol ring, and the only catechol ring is metabolized by COMT, not the resource in all ring. So, it increases duration of action of terbutaline. Replacement of hydroxyl group at third position of the catechol ring by hydroxy methyl group, such as in solbutamol, increases beta two selectivity and decreases metabolism by COMT. Solbutamol contains hydroxy methyl group in place of simple hydroxy group, so. And COMT can only metabolize third position hydroxy group of catechol, which is replaced by hydroxy methyl group in solbutamol, which reduces metabolism and increases the duration and increases the duration of action of the drug. Next point: removal of hydroxyl group at fourth position of catechol ring results the molecule selective for alpha one receptor. For example, phenylephrine. The structure of phenyl table. Removal of OH group at fourth position of the epinephrine results in phenylephrine, which is alpha one agonist drug. So, students, try to draw the structure of drugs like epinephrine. epinephrine isoprenaline terbutaline solbutamol amphetamine phenylephrine and try to elaborate the sar according to the details given in the lecture some structures among these drugs are also drawn in the table drawn by me in the lecture